Hello, it's Joe Simhart here for number 17 in Cults in the Yaw Culture. In my last talk on Course in Miracles, I ended with um, the words, God forbid. So I thought about that. What do we mean by God when we say God? Are we taking his name in vain? Um, should we keep silent about such an ineffable, um, unexplainable concept? Uh, the ancient Jews would not utter the name. They had a tetragrammaton, which we translate as YHWH, and some people say Yahweh, uh, but it was not to be spoken. So <clears throat> this God is kind of a mystery, and my illustration today is of a raven, the painting's called Graven, uh, peering into what is a uh, representation of the word God. So there's a G and an O, and inside, hardly visible, is a yellow D, and with a tiny dot in, in the middle. So the raven is trying to figure out what this God concept is about, and the closer he looks, the more it disappears. So that's our problem. How do we define this? So we come up with all kinds of odd definitions. And the definitions revolve around something called the transcendent, something that transcends our senses. And we also call the occult. It's hidden from our senses. It's hidden from even the limits of human consciousness and awareness and science and, and all of that. So we begin to make stuff up. How do we define this God? You know, we had Moses <clears throat> discovering that this God spoke to him through a burning bush and said, I am that I am, which basically is an ancient way of describing being itself with a sense of life preserved in it, maybe a sense of agency. But, um, so what happens, God brings Moses, his vision. Uh, Moses takes it down from the mountain. And now Moses becomes the hero in this system of God worship and it's up to him to guide the people because he's the hero. They're enthusiastic about him, and he wanders around for 40 years in the desert, so to speak, and, and finds the uh, promised land. But all is not without trouble because the hero is human and often flawed. So the transcendence that can be a, an attraction toward this God idea then becomes coalesced in the hero's idea of it. So as we go on, you know, in, in every tradition, we have this kind of thing. For instance, in Hinduism, the god Shiva was uh, derived from a more ancient god named Rudra, who was an outsider god and destructive. And later, all of this developed in the iconology and the uh, mythology of Hinduism into Shiva, the great destroyer, but also the great creator. And here he is dancing in a ring of fire as he dances the creation into uh, a fiery death. Uh, but all is not lost, of course, because he's also the creator. Um, he has become perhaps the most uh, uh, important god among the Brahmins after being an outsider god in ancient, ancient times. You know, and then Shiva uh, gave birth to Ganesh, who was humanoid, and then developed a problem by being beheaded, and they replaced his head with an elephant. So they have India's most, uh, one of its most favorite gods, Ganesh, the remover of obstacles. And uh, you see this uh, image all over India. We have the same thing in Christianity. Christ became the hero in a new religious movement. And then we have heroes called saints and prophets that are secondary heroes that keep the tradition going. We have a hero of, of the Catholic Church, for instance, is a, a hero with its pope as its head. Um, we also have saints like this carving of San Isidro. Uh, a young man carved this in New Mexico. And um, there's his traditional hat and staff. And he's the saint uh, of uh, patron saint of farmers and farming and craft. So, so he's a secondary hero. Harmless in itself. Uh, may be revered in, in many places, um, as saints are. But the secondary heroes can also form cults around themselves and begin to get 
harmful. And I'm not going to get into all that because we all understand what cults are and, and how that secondary hero can, can um, define God, this mysterious God for us in some way. But it can also get more individualistic. And sometimes when people get God preoccupied, they can be schizophrenic, they can be manic, which often happens. Um, but there's also a diagnosable disease. But there's another um, way to look at this. And I'm going to go through the Science Daily. Uh, this came out in 2016. And it's talking about a mass murder. Anders Breivik, um, a Norwegian, he um, killed 77 people on July 22nd, 2011 in a car bombing in Oslo and a mass shooting at a youth camp on the island of Otoya in Norway, claiming to be a Knights Templar and a, quote, savior of Christianity, unquote, Brevik stated that the purpose of the attacks was to save Europe from multiculturalism. Now, was he crazy or was he God-driven? Uh, what was going on here? So two teams of court-appointed forensic psychiatrists later examined Brevik. The first psychiatric team diagnosed him with paranoid schizophrenia. However, a widespread criticism, or after it, a second team concluded that Breivik was not psychotic and diagnosed him with narcissistic personality disorder. And we talked about this uh, as a characteristic of cult leaders. Um, Breivik was sentenced to 21 years in prison. So what they came up with as a diagnosis for him was narcissism, but also suggested term for criminally violent behavior when psychosis can be ruled out is extreme overvalued belief. So we can take this God, bring him down from the heavens into a hero system, which defines it for us, and that can be reinterpreted. And then we have something called an overvalued uh, belief or an overvalued idea. So, you know, we have to be careful with this God concept. Can we look into it and overvalue our own ideas of what it is? Or must we, must we stay um, distant from it and, and leave it alone and not pretend that we own it or know it or have some kind of deep gnosis that we can uh, relate to other people about this God? So, the title of this is God as Bait, and so using God as bait to bring people into a hero system, and then using a secondary hero system uh, to further control the way people think about this God is maybe what we call destructive cults or manipulative cults, um, closed systems that keep us from seeing things in another way. Thank you.